Praise the Lord, your heavens adore him. this afternoon with the words of David in Psalm 127. Let us hear the word of the Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guard the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from God. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gates. Let us pray. Dear God, today as we consider the blessing of God that overshadows our children, we are reminded that children are heritage from you, the fruit of the womb, your word says, is a reward. You also instruct us to raise up the children in the way they should go, that when they are old, they will not depart from it. Thank you for the responsibility of parenting. Thank you for the grace to parent. Thank you for the guidance you give parents as they raise their children. But today, as we gather, we are reminded that we all are children of God. And you are our Father. Your guidance, your instructions, your leading, your steadfast love, your loving kindness overshadows us. Even as you, Almighty God, and our Heavenly Father overshadow us, even so your blessings overshadow us the children, and the generations to come after us. We thank you that generational blessings are passed on to us, but as people of faith, we also instruct and guide our children to walk the journey of faith. 
even as we ourselves walk this journey of faith under your guidance and leading. Today, we come as your children. Speak to us. Give us guidance. All of us are children of God. So as we come to you, our Heavenly Father, today, we come for renewal. We come for fresh bread. Freshly baked manna from your heavenly throne. Feed us. Nourish us. Satisfy our hunger. Satisfy our thirst. May you water us today with your word. May your word bring peace where there is confusion. May your word bring calmness where there is anxiety. May your word bring healing where there is sickness. May your word bring peace to our world, to our communities, peace in our homes. If there be any among us, that are going through any storms today, we speak peace, be still. And indeed, Lord, we shall be still and know that you are God. We center ourselves in you right now. as we feel your presence all around us. Let your Holy Spirit work in our midst. We ask all these in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. Thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day, our day. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us receive Betty with the children's moment. Amen. Amen. Hello. How are you all doing today? Did you all have a good time yesterday? All right. Okay. So today I'm going to talk about remembrance. How many of you have a diary? Diary that you write stuff in. Or maybe a planner. Some of you have planners. Some of you have like diaries. What do you use a diary for? I can barely hear you. Can you stand up, please? To write down the stuff that happens in your life. To write down the stuff that happens in your life. What about a planner? What do you use a planner for? Yes. To plan what you have to do. To plan what you have to do. So you write them down so you don't, you don't forget. So but do you only have one type of planner or one type of diary. Some come with padlocks, right? Some come with cute padlocks, especially for the girls, right? Some come with cute padlocks and some come with flowers, different, different things, right? Okay, today I want to bring your mind to one thing that I learned personally when I was reading my diary. This diary, I didn't write it. Who wrote this diary? God wrote this diary. And it's also a planner. Do you know that? You can read it and expect certain things from God when you do certain things, right? Right? He doesn't expect, you don't expect that you just say, God, I want bread, and then bread will come, right? Right? He has a way of making sure that you do your part for the bread to come. Yeah? Sometimes the bread may be, may be on the dining table and you're in your bedroom. Will the bread walk to you in your bedroom? 
you have to get up and go get the bread from your dining room, right? Okay. I read a scripture that made a difference in my life, and I want to share it with you. This is in Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Can you all say it together? Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. That will be our memory verse. Hey, last week's memory verse. Last week's memory verse. Did you learn it? Can you all say it together? And I hear yes, like uh, all of you. Can you all say it together? Oh, you have a different version. Okay, can you say it? Awesome. Clap for him. Okay. I know the rest of you all learned the same scripture. Can you all say it together? Get up and say it together. Ready? Go. All three of you. You also learned a different version. Okay. You, the two of you, say yours together. Okay, good. Clap for him. And then the rest of you can tell me your versions when we go to Sunday school. But today, I want you to listen to this very carefully. It says, Then those who revered the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord took notes. The Lord took notes and listened, and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who revered the Lord and thought on his name. Listen to me. I'm going to read it one more time. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. Then those who revered the Lord spoke with one another, the Lord took note and listened, and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who revered the Lord and thought on his name. This scripture made a difference in my life, and I pray to God that he will let you understand what I'm going to tell you right now. Sometimes we say things that come out of our mouth without thinking about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes things come out of your mouth because of the people you associate yourself with, right? Because they say things and then before you know it, you're also talking like how your friends talk. Do you understand? I want you to know that the Lord is taking notes and if you revere him, which means if you respect him, if you love him, if you honor him, if you adore him, the things that come out of your mouth will reflect that because you are always thinking about him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because he said he made us in our image. We have learned about that, right? I want you to know that the things that come out of your mouth when you are with your friends, when with your, you are with your colleagues, when with you are with your playmates, you should be influencing them with the things of God. Does that make sense? Huh? Don't be using bad language around your friends because you will be influencing them and they will be influencing you. I want you to take notes and make sure that everything that comes out of your mouth reflects the things of God. Do you understand? So that you will be a positive influence on your friend and God is going to take note of these things and he will reward you in future. Maybe even around the time that you are talking. He will make things happen for you that you haven't even thought about. Do you understand? Because you are doing things that is going to reflect him to others and glorify his name. Okay? Can you all tell me the memory verse again? Malachi. Again? I'm going to build on it again next week. So I need you to learn Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. And I want you to use the New King James Version. 
That way, all of us will have one version that we are going to repeat when we get here. Do you understand? Everybody will be on the same page and we will not have different versions. Okay? Use the New King James Version. Okay? Tell me the memory verse again. And I'm going to build on it next week. So learn it so that we can build on 17 and... All right? God bless you. The Lord himself is taking notes. That's very powerful. What is he taking notes about concerning your life? Amen. We'll take our second hymn at this time, and during that transition, that will be a transition for the young people to go to Sunday school. Our second hymn is, Bless the Lord God, O my soul. Bless the Lord God, O my soul. your holy church on earth give you praise and worship you. Amen. Amen. Swamo me ya Yesu Christo mi. Wangmene ngale konklo ni kande moni ato ahawo. Wana ya mose wolo ni jie numoni achole di uturo no mie. 
Yicho nyongwe nyoke ne hun. Wong kande na gbe kuku. Alo min kande na gbe kuku neji nyongwe nyoke ne hun le. Di utara nomi. Mose wolo neji enu mo. Yicho nyongwe nyoke ne hun. Na gbe kuku neji nyongwe nyong. Na gbe kuku neji nyongwe nyong kene hun le. Ni ni angote Yehowa. Ni ni angote le. Yehowa. Wo nyongwe le no. Le enoni. Si ni ni ajie ko le. Di wo ke wobi anon. Ke ya anano. Beni afe. Ni woye neke mla ne mle yue mo le fen kwa no. Bo ni afe ni woye neke mla le mle yue mo le fen kwa no. Jeho wa nyo yue mo ne. Nye ha wo jia ebe konkron le. Amen. Ya wèk bebe ma ou nya cho. Mo se bak ban la ton liya me. Mo se bak ban la ton liya. Ta bla ve voa siye ke. Bik bi bla ve voa siye ke liya. Mo se bak ban la ton liya. Ta bla ve voa siye ke. Bik bi bla ve voa siye ke liya. Mina mi se ma ou pe nya. Nya rar la de wo li sinye ye ho wa. Mi a ma wu la dede koto. Ke nou si wo, wo dede go la nye, mi a ple, mi a fe jiji me vi wo to. Ale be, mi a te wun a wo se si a, ple e fe nya wo kata a ji te be. Nya rag la de, wo li si nye ye ho wa, mi a ma wu la dede koto. Ke nou si wo, wo dede go la nye, mi a ple, mi a fe jiji me vi wo to. Ale be mi a te wun a wo, se si a ple, e fe nya o kata a ji te gbe. A fe to la fe nya e ame. Ena yen ken kan sem ni yebe huni wo di toro no miyo. Eti edyo non kron, inye yimu edyo non kron. Baibo se, niye ma e hinta ye e radi ye nyan kopon diya. Na diya wo yinu e diye no, ye yen ni ye ma diya kusida. Se ye ni imre yimu in sem ni na so. Niyo ma e hinta e ye radi ye nyan kopon diya. Na diya wo yinu e diye no, Ye yen eni ye ma diya kusida. Se ye ni emre yimu ense minaso. Amen. Amen.
is good. Amen. Go ahead. We will read the same versions in English. And today is chosen from the fifth book of Moses, Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the revealed things belong to us and our children forever, to observe all the words of this law. The end of the reading. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is good. All the time. Amen. I miss you all last Sunday. God has been good. Today I want to speak on the subject, the blessing of the Lord overshadows our children. The blessing of the Lord overshadows our children. When we started this blessing series, we started, the first series was that the blessing of the Lord brings increase. And I hope that if you have taken that word to heart, you are beginning to see increase in your life. When we talk about increase, it is not so much numerical increase as it is the increase in the area of maturity. 
the increase in your personal relationship with God. If there is a meter that counts or indicates your growth in the things of God, where is that needle in your journey? Where is that growth needle? You know, those of you who drive, when that needle is getting to E, you know that you are running empty, right? I don't know about you, but sometimes you are like, let me just go a little bit before I add some more gas. And uh, if you travel like me, there are certain roads that if you don't get the gas at the right place, you are in trouble because you will go for a long time without a gas station. When we come here on Sunday, we come to gas up. Hear me, somebody. When we come here on Sunday, we gas up. And when we gas up and we are full and not empty, it is then that when we get out in the real world, then the relationships and the interactions and the situations and the spaces that God positions us will begin to pour out from the fullness that is in us. If you do not have anything in you, you cannot give anything. So when we talk about increase, we can look at it from all angles, but the one that is most important to me is that you increase in your walk with God. That you are filled up, overflowing in the face of God so that when the opportunity comes for God to show forth himself through you, you are ready to deliver. And after that, we talked about the blessing of the Lord brings health and wellness. We have to be in good health to do what God is calling us to do. He wishes above all things that you are in health even as you prosper. Or that you prosper and be in health. And when it comes to our health and wellness, it all boils down to the choices we make. Amen? Amen? The things we put in our body, the things we put in our minds, the information we soak in, all of that affects our well-being. These days in education, we have something we call social and emotional wellness or social and emotional learning. We have to know how to manage stress, how to avoid putting ourselves in stressful situations, how to learn to rest and take time off and relax. Amen? Amen. And doing it in a healthy way. Some people think about relaxing in ways that are not relaxing at all. Amen? Amen. So relax and do the things that make you feel well. We also talked about the blessing of the Lord teaches you to prosper. He gives you ideas. One God idea can change your financial situation. Amen? And I believe that we are in those days and times that God is bringing certain ideas to us that should not remain on the drawing board. Those ideas must be implemented. Those ideas, we have to put action to them. So in ending that series today, I want to talk about the blessing of the Lord who overshadows our children. Now, if you are a single parent, that is even more pronounced because the Father God steps in also as father figure in the lives of your children. But those of us who are fathers have an important role to play in making sure that our children are covered and they are blessed. So go with me to Genesis chapter 48, and I'm going to read from verse 1 to 22. Listen very carefully to how this blessing is transferred from generation to generation. Let's hear the word of the Lord. 
Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, Indeed, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob was told, Look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel, his father, strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me, and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make of you a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine, as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Your offering, whom you be beget after them, your off off offspring, whom you beget after them, shall be yours. They will be called by the name of their brothers, in their inheritance. But as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died beside me in the land of Canaan on the way when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath. And I buried her there on the way to Ephrath. That is Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? They are my sons whom God has given me in this place. And he said, please bring them to me and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim with age so that he could not see. Then Joseph brought the, them near him and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I have not thought to see your face but in fact, God has also shown me your offspring. So Joseph brought them from beside his knees, and he, he from beside his knees, and he bowed down with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim with his right hand, and toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh with his left hand, towards Israel's right hand. And brought them near him. Then Israel stretched out his hand and laid it on Ephraim, Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn, and he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walk, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. Let my name be named upon them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Now when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, so he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to the fa his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son. I know he also shall be a people, and he shall also be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and he descend, his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, "By your, by you, Israel, will by you, Israel, I will bless, saying." My God make you as Ephraim and Manasseh, and thus he set Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am dying.
but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. The word of the Lord. This is a very powerful image, picture, painted for us about the power in blessing our children. There is something important throughout scripture about the blessing of the father to the child. Whenever this happens in scripture, it is an indication of imparting to the next generation that which God has ordained for them. And the place of that blessing and the responsibility of blessing our children, God has placed solely in the hands of fathers to do. Now, that is not to say that our mothers cannot bless us. They do always. In fact, I will not call my mom anytime and she will not pray over me before we get on the phone. A mother's prayer has a very powerful place in the life of everybody. If you have a praying mother, you know what I'm talking about. But God has also given an important responsibility to the fathers to be generational activators. What Israel was doing here was activating what God has said from Abraham, Isaac, and down to be imparted to Joseph's children now, Ephraim and Manasseh. Now, when you listen carefully to that story, the blessing that was placed on the younger child was greater than the blessing that was placed on the older child. In fact, Joseph tried to correct his father and said, no, 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 you got the hand on the wrong one, you know, put, you know, the blessing, this is the older one, the blessing must be on him. Now, why is that important? Because each and every one of our children are unique. And God has a special blessing for each of our children. If you have more than one child, they are not the same. Mothers will tell you no two of their children are the same. Not even the pregnancy experience that they had with each of those children. The experiences are different. Because the Bible tells us we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Every one of us have a unique blessing from God. And fathers who understand and have the faith knows what it means to bless their child. There is a moment, it's not just everyday blessing, but there is a particular moment in the life of every individual where you have to receive your parents' blessing particularly the father's blessing. I remember vividly when I decided to leave Ghana. I lived in Accra. My dad was in Pando. When it was time to leave, I felt the need for his blessing. I wanted his blessing before I left the shores of Ghana to go to Switzerland at the time in 1992. And I went to my dad and asked him for his blessing. And I received that blessing from him before I left. Praise God. When we lay hands on our children, something spiritually happens, church. And it is very important that all of us who are fathers, and mothers too, but particularly this responsibility is given to fathers, that we receive the father's blessing. Amen? Amen. Receiving that Father's blessing is very important. And be cognizant of that. Before my son will leave for college, I make sure we have time for me to bless him and release him into the world. Amen? So after Joseph had been given the throne, second only to Pharaoh himself, he didn't seek revenge, but the thing that he wanted more than anything was to go to his father. Praise God. 
He sought after the one who had nurtured the faith in him that had brought him through all the difficulties that he experienced in Egypt. For 16 years, Jacob lived peacefully in Egypt with his son Joseph. Remember the story? He had them bring his father to him in Egypt. So Israel lived with his son Joseph for 16 years in Egypt. And as the end approached, Joseph took his sons to be blessed by his father. If anyone knew the importance of blessing of a father, it was Jacob. Who tricked, if you remember, his own father into giving him the blessing over his brother Esau. So, you know, Israel knew something. Israel knew that when it was his turn to receive the father's blessing, he took the wrong, he took the blessing of his older brother. If you remember the story, that he put, you know, feathers, um, sheep skin on himself so he would feel like it was his brother Esau and took his brother's blessing. So now fast forward, he has to bless his grandchildren. But he has the insight to know each of those children and what God is calling them to. So he tried to correct the mistake that he did. His life was a result of that blessing. His success was a result of that blessing. Friends, when you have the Father's blessing, it carries you forward in life. And if the Father's blessing, our human Father's blessing are important, how much more the blessing of our Heavenly Father? Jacob also knew that he was an important link in continuing his father's blessing. On his deathbed, Jacob didn't desire to leave his family the goods he had collected or the wisdom he had come to know, the blessing of God on their lives. Rather, he prayed for the favor of God and the blessing of God to go with them. You see, the best deposit we can make in the lives of our children today it's not leaving them mansions, real estate, it's good. But the, the most precious thing is the word of God. The most precious thing is the walk with God. So that when you are raising your children and things happen in your life or in the family, point out God's blessings to them. When God favors them, let them know this is the favor of God. I remember just a few months, a couple months now, when I met her to go to training, and we didn't know where he was going to stay. And we were calling, you know, the army hotel where he was supposed to stay, and nobody would answer the call. Until finally his sergeant said, why don't you stay at the unit in the university? We have everything you need. Now, that saved him money, but I reminded him, I said, listen, son, remember we prayed about this situation, and we didn't know where you were going to stay. Now look at the favor of God. I want you to remember that. There are certain things that become landmarks in our lives. That moment was a landmark for him. And I have to remind him, remember this day. Remember in the Bible, when God does a significant thing, many times they will take a stone and build an altar. That is a landmark. Point out the landmarks in the lives of your children to them. So that in the future, they can look back and say, God did this for me at this point. In fact, in scripture, they will name the place. Remember when Joseph had to uh, sleep in the wilderness and put his head on a stone? And he had a dream? And he named that place. Many times when significant things happen in these patriots, they remembered and they had a significance or a, a, a point, a mark, a landmark for that place of where those things happen. Why am I saying this? The blessing of the Lord overshadows our children and we have to be cognizant of these things when they happen and point it out to them. Amen? The favor of God carries our children through life. They are going to go where we are not going to be. 
We are not going to be with them forever. But when we make the deposits in them today and we release them to go, that favor will go with them. They carry their own favor. A good example, just this last few weeks we were talking about um, admission into school. Anyona wants to go to the school, uh, Booker T. Washington High School for the visual and performing arts because music has become her passion. And she wants to go to this school and she applied and she's on the waiting list. In fact, she's number one on the waiting list, but I know that how the system works. You don't live in Dallas, you'll be on the waiting list. So I kept asking him, so what if you don't get in? And she said, oh, I, I'm going to get in. I know I'll get in. Don't worry about it, I'll get in. She has such confidence in getting in. So last week, was it last week that they performed? Last week she was in a week camp, three week camp, and they did a performance and she played a lead role on stage. So one of the board members of the school district went to watch this program and when everything was done, the board member came to her and wanted to take a photograph with Anyona. And she said, where are you going to school? And she said, well, I'm a new tech, uh, but I want to go to Booker T. I've applied, I'm on the waiting list. She said, this is my phone number. Call me if you haven't heard anything by such and such a date and I'll make a phone call. Now, what does that mean? Favor. She carries her own favor. And God favors her. I wasn't there. Her mother wasn't there. She made her own connection. She has now a picture with, you know, the board member of the school district of 200 and something schools that says, hey, if you don't get in, I would, you know, make a phone call to get you in. Now, I'm not saying this to brag, but I'm just pointing out that when we raise our children and we put the seed in them and we allow them to flourish, God will take them wherever they want to go. The favor of God overshadows our children. So in this church, our children are covered by us. As a church, we pray for these children. But I want you as church family to also continue to pray for them. Families in this church, our children and our young people are an important asset to us. Seven of them got scholarships last week. $395 each to go to camp in Tulsa for a whole week. And we applied and usually they don't give full scholarship. So when I sent the application, I said, whatever you can cover, the church will cover the rest. And I got an email back the next day and said, I'm glad to let you know all the seven young people have been covered with the scholarship and we don't have to pay anything but rent a van and have somebody take them. Praise the Lord. So the blessing of the Lord overshadows our children too. But the only way that can become a reality is when we continue to deposit the word of God in them when we continue to keep them in church, a lot of our young people are not in church these days. But here in this church, we want to encourage our young people to be here. So that the blessing of the Lord will continue to overshadow them. There's a lot I would love to say. I haven't gone into my notes today, but I, I hope the message is clear. That in this church, our children and young people are our greatest asset. And we want to continue to be a blessing to them. All of us, all of these children are our children. So let's continue to speak blessings upon these children that we see in this church. The talents that are developing in this church is overwhelming. Great things are going to happen with our young people. If you know families whose children are where they are not getting the word, this is where they need to be. Think of families you know whose children can be blessed right now as we speak in the Sunday school. A family came to visit last week. I spoke to them actually today. I spoke to uh, our sister who came to visit with the husband and children. But they went to our Sunday school and they go to another church. But they are now telling their parents, we want to come to this Sunday school. They said, we don't mind, we have to go to the morning service first and come here in the afternoon, we will do it. So we must be doing something right. Another family's child came here and now 
you know, the parents don't come here, but they will come and drop the child at Sunday school and come back and get the child. So let us continue to do what we are doing. And let's not lose heart, for we are building the future right here. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Like always, if we listened attentively, he said he had four series. Today is the last series. The first one was blessing of the Lord for income, of increase. Blessing of the Lord for increase in the relations with the Lord. Number two, blessing of the Lord bring health and wellness through choice, through our own choice. Number three, blessing of the Lord teaches you to prosper in all aspects of life. And today's is the last one. Blessing of the Lord overshadows our children overshadows our children through the favor of the Lord. May we stand up, please. Let us use this four series to affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe in God. It, please. Today is the first Sunday of the month. Uh, let's uh, feast with the Lord. Praise God. Friends, I invite you to the Lord's table today. This is the Lord's table. All who believe are invited to come and feast at this table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give thanks and praise to our eternal God. You have given us life and the second birth in your spirit. You claim Israel as your chosen nation and raise up the church as a witness to the resurrection, breathing into it your life and your power. From worlds apart, you have gathered us together. When we go astray, you welcome us home. Always your love has been steadfast towards us. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing glory to God in the highest. Your name be glorified, holy, 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 God of power and might. The heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night that our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, the Bible tells us that he took bread. 
And after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. And as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup and he poured and as he did, he said to the disciples, this is the blood of my covenant shed for you as often as you do this and drink of this cup, you do it in remembrance of me. So friends, if you have received your elements, go ahead and take your wafers at this time. Those of us joining us virtually, if you make sure you have something by you, it could be bread, it could be anything, it's a symbolic gesture towards God. Take an element, anything. Friends, church, the body of Christ broke in for you. The cup of salvation, the blood of Jesus Christ shed for you. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And the church will say, Amen. Announcement, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says the expectations of the righteous shall never be cut off. I don't know what your expectations are, but the good thing is that it shall come to pass in due season. Amen. Amen. Shall we pay attention to the following an announcements? Uh, our number amounted to 64 the previous, uh, uh, the previous week. And then we had uh, 45 adults and then 19 kids and the summation is 40, 64 and then our offer, offertory amounted to 1,883 and the breakdown is as follows if you bear me out we did three contributions one the other one was in respect of the laptop and that one amounted to 136 the online we had 697 and then in person, we had 750, 750. So the summation of all the three came down to 1,583. The men's fellowship will be meeting just after service in the groom's, in the groom's room. Thank you for your attention, and may you have a fruitful week. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please continue. Yes, Mr. A. Mm. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Sincere apologies. <laughs> Do we have anyone fellowship with us for the very first time today? <laughs> oh. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for coming.
This is, God bless you. Amen. This is Ghana. Uh, this this is our church. And if you do if you don't have a place to worship, just be part of us, and I can tell you that your life will never be. There. Oh, it should be coming. Okay, thank you, Uncle, for bringing him as well. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Please continue to keep our young people who will be leaving to go to camp in your prayer. They will be staying at the University of Tulsa. That's a university I know quite well because I went to school in Tulsa myself. But keep them in your prayer. Uh, they will leave next week, Monday. Uh, early morning they will leave and they will come back the following Sunday. Amen. So the parents, those of you whose children are going, we have some packets that we'll make sure you have as to what they are packing, what they can bring, and then their whole schedule on what they are doing for uh, the whole time that they are going to be there. We'll prepare our hearts for offerings at this time. If you have your offering with you, will you lift it up as we decree over them? If you have your offering with you, lift it up. If you are doing it online, just... Focus on the amount you are given and let the Lord release his blessing. Dear God, today we release our seed. Even as we have done so, we know that the harvest would come because we have fulfilled the condition. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask the praise team to come. And lead us as we bring our offering rejoicing. Amen.
God, we thank you for the harvest that comes as a result of these seeds. Thank you for the work of the kingdom that this money gets to do as we advance this kingdom business. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above his heavenly host. Praise for the Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. I do want to very quickly say a great thank you to all of you who remembered my birthday on Monday, June 27th. There was such an outpouring of love from all over the world. I want to thank you. Yesterday was our 28th wedding anniversary, and uh, interestingly, I tried to su surprise Betty, and she also tried to surprise me. So we were at a picnic, and my surprise was to happen there, and her surprise was to happen there also. And the very people we asked to help us with this surprise were the very same people who kept very quiet. So here we are with two cakes, one from me and one from her to celebrate 28 years. So, you know, even though we both wanted to surprise each other, we ended up, you know, surprising us both. So that was wonderful. So thank you all for praying for us. Uh, for how far the Lord has brought us. Amen. We will take our closing hymn at this time. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is 
thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turn with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need that thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, to Summer and winter and springtime, Covers, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need of thy hand provided. Great is thy faithfulness, sin and a pleaser and your wrath, thine own dear presence to cheer to God, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow, blessings are mine with ten thousand Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, since I see all I have needed, I provide Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Let us receive the benediction. The Lord keep you and protect you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord grant all your heart's desires. The Lord lift you up and cause your hind feet to be lifted and step into the places that he has ordained for you. May he put laughter in your mouth. May he cause any dark clouds that hover over your life to fade away. And may the sun shine upon you. May the light of God guide you and lead you this week as you go forth and do ministry wherever he takes you. Go forth showcasing Jesus Christ in your interactions with people. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. take our recessional hymn at this time. Let us sing a song of blessing. Let us sing a song of blessing. Let us sing a song 
blessing let us thank the Lord today for his love is never ceasing and his kindness on our way with his mercy and protection he is with his children still and with all that do his will in this world of imperfection everything in this world ends but god's love for us a sun eagle spreads his fur covering and sons he knew us from the beginning he will keep us till at last when this earthly life is high, we shall praise him gladly sing everything in this world but God's love for Let us go in the peace of the Lord. Amen.